your good. Here we have an easier, quicker way. We can use a vacuum machine, which uh, brings out um, a lot of uh, qualities. We can pressure the uh, spices into the fish, making it the process the faster the salt would go into the fish, the unnecessary juices would go out, and you have a really nice end product. So this is curing, Norwegian style. Salt, sugar, spices, and we always use fresh dill. Rub it, dry rub it. Classically, you pressure it a little bit, leave it for three to four days as mentioned, but here we can uh, on a modern kitchen, most of us have a vacuum machine, vacuum bag, sous vide technique, and then you're good. This is packed with flavor. This technique will help you bring a juicy product. You will taste this after the cooking session is over, and that will show you some of the uh, flavor textures. You can add spices here as you want. If you want chili, if you want anise, if you would like just black pepper and salt, it's a lot of ways to do it. Often the easiest is the best for these matters. Any questions? Have you smoked salmon before? Curing salmon before? For um, treating the fish like that, it is an uh, old school traditional way. But for old school, it's often new school. Um, and we see that this is a, a, a technique that are coming back really well in the Nordic countries. You could, but the brown sugar is a bit more um, dense. But the, the same effect would be in, as long as you have the salt with it as well. Uh, brown sugar for the galas or the, the curing part would be really nice. But for dry curing, it will give you some coloring. Yeah, that is and it will for uh, grilling and for use of high temperatures, you will get a, a darker caramelization. Which is, if that is what you're out for, that is uh, absolutely a, a good idea. But myself, I haven't used brown sugar that much on uh, on fish because of the flavors. That it is uh, a lighter flavor profile than other things. But for um, I can imagine like the, the flavors and uh, spices you use here, brown sugar would be perfect. Take away the shells of the fish. 
salmon shells is really big. Of course, now I'm in the middle of a dining room, so this will be uh, maybe a bit messy, but if you scrape it like this, you will have a salmon skin that is really, really uh, light, no fat, no other flavors than the skin itself. So if you have fresh salmon in-house, you do this, boil it, you won't get that fishy smell from the water because the fat underneath the skin is, uh, is out. We took that away already. We can take away the shells. And you're not gonna see me do everything. We have um, for a uh, fine dining experience, if you have a baked piece of salmon, that is uh, low heat, for instance, or high, depending on your wish and desire. You can rinse this, take care of it, rinse it in cold water, and you can add it into canola oil. Cold canola oil, turn up the heat, you will boil out the water in the shell, and you will get a crispy shell for, uh, for toppings. It's like potato chips, it's like everything else, but it will have a light hint of uh, the same flavor profile as the salmon has. You will feel that it is salmon, but it will curl up and it will be a really nice, beautiful crunch. The same thing with this is that if you boil this tender, you dry it off in the oven or dehydrate it over the oven or overnight, and you fry it, it will suffocate, it will grow and it will be bigger. But if you have oil on this, in between two baking sheets of paper, and bake it for 160 um, degrees with pressure, you will have a cracker, which is as you want it, as you cut it. And that will bring a lot of uh, creativity and artistic uh, measures to, to, to the fish. And you are able to be creative in a whole different way. For a lot of people, we throw away this skin, when we first cut it, we throw away the shells, we don't use it. We throw away bones because we don't use it, and the head and everything. But the point is, why should we throw it away? Most part of the fish, I guess, if you cut down a fish in-house, you will have, maybe, if you're lucky, between 30 and 40 percent that goes away. If you're able to use this in stocks, in soups, in uh, sautés, in additives, in flavor, extraction in oils or fat, it will be a much more econ uh, better economy for the fish to use it as, uh, as this. The skin can last, uh, not forever, but it will last really well, dry, uh, worked well uh, in the kitchen. You can fry it up when you need it. And for the bones, you see on this part, it's a lot of a lot of meat still to it. Those you can scrape off. And then you have a beautiful salmon tartare. As now we've had a pretty clean station, there's some shells here, but for this fish, uh, when it's as big as it is now, it's around 5 kilos, they could end up a lot of meat on the bones if you cut them whole. And for that matter, we should scrape them. That's a nice sound. Exactly. So the cuttings now for the two fish, skins, bones, everything, is up to here. Maybe two to three liters. Which is not that at all, but it's uh, in, in the amount, it's, it's huge. I will go find it myself a spoon and I will scrape the bones for you. I found my spoon. Some of the best things I can be served is a really nice tartar. Especially salmon tartar has a lot of classical um, uh, French 
Lebensmittel. 